Yo, what's up guys? It's Radislav here and in this video we're doing a follow along training routine to get your front splits training just once a week as an adult. I'm assuming you've seen the instructions from the other videos, so put on some background music, listen to my cues, and let's get started. We're starting with a calf stretch, so you're going to need some sort of a ramp, either a yoga block or I'm using a yoga mat and a weight here, just so you have a nice ramp for your foot. You're trying to keep your knee straight as you're leaning your hips forward. You should feel an intense stretch down the back of your calf like this. The higher the ramp, the more intense the stretch will be. See how I'm using the wall for balance? Feel free to use something for balance as well. We are hanging out here for two minutes. All the passive stretches will be done for two minutes just to help open up the muscle, lengthen out the fascia before we actually get into the front splits. This is going to help ensure that the weight and pressure of the split goes into the muscles versus into the joints. A lot of times people experience knee pain, ankle pain, hip pain with this because they're not, they haven't taught their body yet exactly how to stretch properly. And this right now is just warming up the mind to know that the calves are going to be stretched and it's releasing them. So a lot of times calf stress and tension can go into the hamstrings and limit your front lunging slash splits ability. And we're coming down to the last bit here, getting ready to switch legs in three, two, one. Go ahead, back off, we'll switch sides. Same here, putting your foot down flat on that ramp you've built. Straight knee, hips going forwards, pushing your heel down to the ground, trying to feel a deep stretch down the back side of your calf. As you're going through all three of these passive stretches, the beginning, you're going more gentle, and as time goes into the two minutes, we're trying to go further and further. So you're trying to reach your hip forwards nice and slow. You're not rushing there. If you've done this workout a few times, don't rush to where you were last time. Always start off easy in the first minute and gradually build up to go deeper and deeper as time goes on. We're coming to the end in three, two, one, back off. And now we're going to switch to elephant walks. So grab wherever you're comfortable, either under the toes, on the shins, and you're trying to compress your chest to your knees or your thighs, and then extend one leg back as you keep contact with the other leg. See here, my thigh stays glued to my stomach as one leg goes back. You should feel a deep stretch down the hamstring. You might not be able to fully extend your leg back, that's okay. 
We're just trying to target each leg individually and get a deep stretch warming up for the front splits. As time goes on during this stretch, you might notice you become a little bit more flexible, so you might want to adjust your hands to a more difficult position. So here I'm putting my palms flat down. Easiest would be to hold the shins, then move down to the ankles, then under the toes. And a harder variation like this is just to put your palms flat as you're trying to maintain contact with the thigh and the stomach. Good work, we're coming to the end of this two minutes in three, two, one. Next, you're gonna get a wall set up or a couch and you're gonna be wedging your foot in between. The closer your knee is to the wall or the couch, the harder it gets. The other knee is gonna be in a nice lunge position. The temptation here is to just rush up and get yourself up. But what you really need to focus on is curving your back and pushing your hips forward. So you wanna avoid this position and head into this position. Now we're stretching through the hip flexor and the quad versus the other position was taking tension off the hip flexor and quad. We really want to focus on squeezing the butt of the leg that's behind to help push the hips forwards. If you relax it, that's not going to help you get deeper into the stretch. But if you activate it, it's like it's pushing you down into the stretch further, which is going to be very useful when you're in the full splits position. So from here, you're slowly trying to raise yourself up get towards the wall so that your butt touches your heel. Remember, we have two minutes to do this. There is no rush, and I always start in the bottom position, even though I can do the splits. Starting from the bottom, squeezing the glutes, engaging as much as possible, coming up slowly into the standing position while maintaining a flat back and not arching and sticking your butt out. You're trying to tuck your butt underneath. Good, and we're finishing in three, two, one. Now, for those acute eye observers, you're gonna notice I'm doing the exact same side here. I did not get footage of the other side. So enjoy it, we're doing the same setup, either with a couch or a wall like this. The closer the knee is to the wall or the couch, the harder it gets. Keeping the back in that neutral flat position, trying not to extend like this because that takes the tension off the quads and the hip flexors. Starting in the low position, do not rush to stand up. You have two minutes to go. Remember, you're trying to squeeze your butt. So often, I will just put my hand there and make sure I'm engaging so that I'm squeezing my butt to push my hips forwards and stretch my hip flexors more. Slowly and gradually coming up.
and we're finishing in three, two, one, coming off the wall. Next up will only be one minute. We're done with the passive stretches. This will be an active stretch. It's a deep lunge extension. So the deeper you are, the harder it gets. The higher your hips, the tighter you are and the easier it will be. The lower your hips, the harder it's going to be. As you do this, you wanna make sure your hip does not lift up. The goal here is to put the knee down and then raise it up, reaching the heel back towards the back wall while not letting your hip come off the ground. You should feel a really strong stretch through the hip flexors with this. And as you get better, your knee can come more forward and your hips will come closer to the ground. So once again, if you're not um, loosey-goosey on this, you're gonna be higher up, starting with the knee on the floor and trying to extend the knee, straighten it while driving the heel backwards. So in this case, my right leg is driving the heel backwards as I try to keep my hip in place. One minute here, so we're almost done. We'll be finishing this in three, two, one. And we're gonna switch sides here. So again, this is an active stretch. I'm really trying to go for it, pushing my hip down, pushing my knee forwards, not letting my hip come up as I straighten my back leg. Very important, should feel a nice deep stretch. And as you can see here with my knees bent, I'm in the front splits position fully. So you can consider this like a baby front split and you're just actively moving through, getting ready for the real front splits. Only one minute on this will be done in about three, two, one. And now we're heading into the real full blown splits. We'll be here for two minutes. In the first 60 seconds, we're just taking our time slowly coming down. I have the wall there for balance. You can have a couch or anything you want, but you're spending this first minute opening up the legs and slowly stretching out into the front splits. I tend to start with my good side first, and then I go into my bad side. I do this to warm up the muscles because generally the first time you go into it is you're going to be the tightest. As you do the next set and the next set, it'll get a little bit easier. So this first 60 seconds, we're just slowly grinding our way down as far as we can, holding our body weight up. If you can imagine like a plank, we're, doing, we're using strength in the stretch. Very important. The previous ones, the first three were just passive, and now we're doing active stretching. Now, as we get close to that 60 second mark, you're really trying to avoid touching that back knee to the ground until the last moment. Now, feel free to touch the back knee down. And we're gonna start our twist. So get into the deepest position you feel confident. And we're gonna twist in, trying to squeeze the ground and pick our bodies up. Three to five seconds squeeze and then opening up, thinking about entering the middle splits, twisting to the other side. Coming back in, squeeze the ground, twist, use as much assistance of the hands as you need. Coming up, 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 and then down, opening up into the middle splits angle. So we're going from two extremes here. We're relaxing, reaching our legs back, opening the hips, and then twisting, closing the hips as best as we can, trying to drive the back knee into the ground and the right calf into the ground to pick yourself up. Feeling confident? Take the hands off the ground, really trying to engage and squeeze. Coming up on the end of this leg, and we'll be switching about three, two, one. Coming out, and take your time. We'll be starting the next set. Feel free to pause the video as needed and take a little bit more rest between this. We're opening up again, same 60 seconds. Slowly coming down. You can be letting that front foot go forwards, letting the back foot go backwards, whichever feels more comfortable for you. As you notice, my front foot is flat right now, but as I get farther apart, I will need to lift the toes. So keep in mind that is a technique. Pretty hard to keep extending with the toe down. And you're focusing on squeezing the legs together. Let's imagine this is just like a regular plank where you're targeting your abs, but instead of your abs, you're working to strengthen the quads and hip flexors of the back leg 
and the hamstrings and calves of the front leg. The stronger they get, the more mobility they will offer you. As we come into this minute, we're going to let the knee down, but try and take that last, last moment and put the knee down. Coming into this again, we're trying to get as deep as possible, and then we're going to squeeze, twist forwards, try and drag the ground behind us, and then opening up towards the middle splits. Turning the hips, in this case to the left, and now to the right. My right heel is dragging down, my right knee is pressing, or left knee is pressing to the ground to get me up. I'm using my hands for a little bit of assistance. Remember, we're doing one to three sets of these. If on the first set you can go super extreme, super hard, and finish off um, basically going 110%, then you don't need the other two sets. But if you haven't done this before, I recommend taking a few extra sets and starting at 80%, coming up to 90%, and then eventually reaching 100% intensity, such as like a one rep max on a bench. Instead of going to 225 right away, you might warm up 155, 185, and that last set is 225. I generally, when I come out of this, I like to sit and close my hip angle, so you can try this too. It feels really nice after the front splits. Okay, I'm going to do one more set with you, a little bit different. This would be considered a hard version for me, so I'm going 110%. I'm trying to get myself down as quickly as possible under my own strength. So notice I take the last opportunity to put my knee down. My calf is down before my knee comes down. I'm trying to get the deepest position I can as quickly as I can because I'm feeling warm after that first set. Now my hands are off the ground and I'm basically just going for a minute and a half of just pure reps here. So no assistance. I'm opening and closing, squeezing the ground, driving, using just my leg muscles to do this. And you'll notice as this goes on, especially on my other leg, it really begins to shake and hurt. And I know that doing one more is not going to be that effective because I've maxed out on this one. If you're a beginner, feel free to take the 60 seconds. I'll let you know when that is up, and then drop down and do it just like the last set. If you're feeling advanced or you've done this a few times, feel free to try doing it this way, where you just go to the bottom as soon as possible instead of waiting 60 seconds. And three, two, one. If you haven't touched your back knee, feel free to touch your back now. And this is a very intense way to train the splits, so it's not for the faint of heart. If you're only training once a week, you also need to be smashing it. So the first few weeks, take it easy, but as time goes on, you need to be hitting this hard. Otherwise, training every seven days is just too much of a gap. And realistically, you should be training three, four, or five days, but it's all based on your intensity and your ability to recover. So if you come back to do the splits again, and you don't feel recovered, and you're not seeing improvement, you need more time in between, or you need more intensity during the session. Because if I can bench press 225, but all I ever do is 185 in the gym, and I never come close to my max, it's going to be very hard to keep increasing the amount of weight I'm doing. So here we're coming to the end, just stretching, finishing. I'm in a lot of pain at this moment, so I'm trying to relax, keep it calm. And then when we do come out, you can choose to close your hips, just to help the hip flexor feel a little better. Take as much of a break as you need in between all of these. No rush, just pause the video. It can take anywhere from one to three minutes in between. And we're going on the other side. Same thing. Here I'm just rushing the set. I'm trying to come down as quickly as I can under my own powers. I'm trying to touch my right calf before my left knee touches. Really stretching deep, trying to get down quick. And then I'm spending the next minute and a half doing the exact same thing. No hands, just trying to squeeze the ground. And this is my weaker side, so you will notice my right leg starts to shake like a real, uh, what is it, like a feather, like a leaf, <laughs> about halfway through this. So it's okay, shaking is good, shaking is normal, that's your nervous system, that's your body just learning the position, and each time you do it, you'll get better and better, and it's going to hurt less and less.
yeah, I hope you enjoyed this follow along. Make sure you watch the original video that it also explains everything I'm going through. Like, comment, subscribe, leave me any thoughts down below. Obviously, you can do one more round here if you feel you need it. We've only gone through two. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. Let's <laughs> enjoy my leg trembling for the last few seconds here. Oh, yeah. Sign of hard work happening. All right. Enjoy your training, and I'll see you in the next one.